So today we have another drawing detail session. And as you can see, we're going to look specifically at warm and cold rooms. And we're going to use four examples to talk through the principles of warm and co cold rooms, but also to look at some specific detailing issues, um, which are kind of generic to all rooms, but also some specific ones that are uh, often kind of of interest to students when you're doing student projects. And if it's all right with you, we'll do it like the last session. We'll just run both together. It'll probably take about an hour and 20, an hour and a half. Is that okay? Yeah, rather than break and come back. Great, thanks. If anybody says no, <laughs> they, can have a, they can have a break. Right, okay. So, let me just go into here. So, um, I wanted to cover this topic because warm and cold roofs, they're an area, they're an area of construction that, that I think people can get a little bit confused about. Um, and it's really, I think it's really important just to understand the fundamental principles behind warm and cold rooms before you start detailing them. And then I want to look at some sort of specific issues relating to particularly gutters that often come up in student projects because often a lot of students don't want to see gutters. And, okay, terrible thing to have on a building, gutters. So we look at a few sort of ways of hiding the gutters, but then we'll look at a few ways of showing the gutters and really enjoying those gutters in your building, all right? So as usual, feel free to um, ask questions halfway through. Now I must admit today, I've not yet, I didn't manage to scan in the, um, the references. So I'm just gonna show them on the slide. Okay, so the first project that we're going to use is this, this project in Austria. Um, which is a house, and we're going to, going to use this as a good example of a, um, a cold roof. Okay, so you can see, sorry about the glare there, so you can see the, the, the project there, it's a, a sort of two-story house, timber clad, and it has this quite large oversailing roof, and in this case we have an exposed <coughs> um, gutter which is a, a zinc gutter on the edge here and we've got this big balcony space and then that roof continues inside and forms the upper roof of the internal space. Okay so we'll, I'll come back to the picture but I'm going to now look at some of the details and draw some of those details and talk about the principle. So First of all, let's just talk in terms of very kind of basic first principles <coughs> about roofs. Um, we are talking about pitched roofs when we talk about cold roofs. Um, <coughs> we're, we're nearly always talking about pitched roofs. So the principle of a cold roof, it's a kind of misleading term because it's not a cold room. It's not a cold building, you know, it's an insulated building. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that the, the building is not insulated. But if I draw a very sort of schematic section through a pitched roof building, there's our, um, there's our building. And it's got insulation in the envelope. Occupants warm, and let me just overlay. The basic principle of a cold roof is that you separate your waterproof roof layer and separate that from your insulation, and you allow ventilation to flow under that roof, okay? And the great thing about this kind of roof system is that if I put, if I put a, an occupant in 
here. So we've got we've got our building occupant breathing, cooking, having showers, producing moisture, and that moisture will eventually probably, you know, may make its way into the insulation. Although we would try and stop that with vapor barriers, but it may get into the insulation here. And in a cold roof, that moisture can simply pass through the insulation and this ventilation <coughs> will take that moisture away, take it into the outside air, and you have no problems with that. You also have the, the other benefit that should any condensation form underneath underneath the roof covering here, then again, you've got lots of air movement to dry that out, dry the construction, take that moisture away. So um, that's kind of basic principles of a cold roof. Now, if we just overlay a warm roof, warm roof may, it actually may look, exactly, oops, it may look exactly the same from the outside, so it doesn't necessarily have to have a, a, a kind of discernible appearance, but the main difference on a warm roof is that you don't have the air gap. The ventilation gap between the waterproof covering and the insulated build-up. So you don't have the opportunity for air to um, circulate and sort of blow underneath that roof covering. Now if I just go to, if we just go back to the cold version, the, the other important version that I should draw, which is a very common construction technique in the UK is whereby you actually lay your insulation in above the ceiling. So rather than, if you're not, if you're not occupying the loft space, which of course more and more we are now, but if you're not, you can insulate horizontally in that roof space and it's a cold roof because, again, air can, can just sort of blow through that um, attic space. The benefit of this is that you can put lots and lots of insulation in and you can use the cheaper insulation, the, the, um, the glass wall products, um, sheet floor products. So you can get a big, thick layer of insulation in here keeping your building nice and warm. When you're insulating in the plane of the roof, um, obviously any insulation depth is reducing the height of your room. So it, you know, it is a factor. And if you're, if you're retrofitting um, a, an attic space, a roof space, you do have to look at the, the balance between how thick you can get the insulation and whether you're making that room too, too kind of low inside. I mean, with, with the good quality PIR insulations, the foam insulations, you, you can probably insulate an attic with about 100 to 150 millimeters of good quality insulation nowadays. With, a, with an attic space, if you were using a, a sort of glass wall product, you'd probably be looking to put maybe 400 to 500 millimeters of quilted insulation in there. And it's really cheap. So there's no problem with that. The thing you need to be slightly careful about is you need to maintain this ventilation path. So you, what you must not do is shove that, that um, quilted insulation all the way into the eaves. Because if you push that all the way up to the underside of your roof, you'll have blocked that air route and you won't have that adequate ventilation through the attic. 
So it's just something to bear in mind if you're if you want to work on existing building issues. Okay. Any questions on those the two kind of main principles? Okay. Were, were people sort of familiar with those two principles when we uh Now we'll, we'll look at these examples and we'll use those to, um, to look at these principles again and then to look at some of the specific detailing issues. So if we just go back to our house in Bregenz, okay, let's have a look at that again. And a few things you might notice here. is one thing that they have this quite thin edge to the roof. And often this is quite an important aspect in designing a roof, that in reality your roof will be quite thick because it has structure in there, it's got a lot of insulation. But quite often you don't want a really sort of huge thick edge profile to your roof. And you see what they've done here is they've stepped back. So you've got the main roof edge here and then they've stepped it back and then it steps down again to achieve that kind of thin edge. So if we draw that, so we draw, as usual, I'll draw it one to five, which is a good scale. And as usual, I'll, I'll start myself off with a measure just so that we, you know, just so that I know I get things off onto the right scale. Okay, so looking at this, we've got our structure Tindall wall structure is 200 millimetres thick. So I'll start by drawing one of those. So that's our, our basic wall um, depth. Okay. And then looking at this, this wall build up, the inside. We've got our inner wire, plywood, asphalt, and concrete. Okay. So what they have for this wall builder they've got fifteen mil layer of Ori strand board, OSB. That's that wood chip product that's all compressed. Very cheap, um, but works perfectly well. They have a 50 mil services gap. And then in this case, they've got a veneered plywood on the inside because they obviously wanted a, they wanted a kind of timber appearance. Um, they didn't want to, to see the, the OSB because OSB is, is you know, it's, fairly rough product really. So that's their veneered plywood. And this is the services zone that they've created. So if they want to run cables or pipe, they can do that without um, destroying the, the integrity of the wall. Okay. They also have a vapor barrier, which they have stapled to the outside of the OSB. So just following on from some of the previous sessions, that's just to keep the moisture, the moisture inside the building, to stop that getting into the insulation. OSB on the outside. So it's a fairly standard timber frame wall construction, really. OSB on the outside. Lots of insulation in the wall.
fairly kind of familiar build up to us now. We've looked at a few examples with this build up. And what they have on the outside of this project is silver fir strips. So they've got fastened running vertically up the outside of this OSB. And then they've got plain silver fir flaps, kind of like this. kind of idea. Okay, that's a typical wall build up. And if you just look back at the photograph, that's what it that's what it looks like. What they've done with these silver fur strips, because the gap is quite small and because they chamfered it, you don't see through it, you just get a black shadow when you look through that. And we're not really going to look at this, but what they've done, which I, I quite like to do, is they've, when they get to the balcony, they take the same silver fir cladding and they've just faced it out slightly. So it kind of has the same appearance, but you get some light coming through it. Okay. In fact, no, I don't think they have. Yes, look, yeah, maybe they have spaced it out, I'm not quite sure, but. You can see through it anyway because it's a balcony view. Okay. There's our basic wall, and this is interfacing with the the window. Zinc sill okay, zinc sill flashing over the top of the, the window subframe. The um, top frame, I'm going to draw this quite quickly. There's a window, and then this is finished off from here with a fur silver uh, sill board. So yeah, typical, typical window opening there in a timber frame. Right, now let's move up to the roof. That's really what we're interested in. And I think what I'm going to do is give you a place. Because I've not really left enough space for my drawing. But also, I can just do a quick cheap tour. <coughs> So I'll just, I'll just quickly reverse that to be um, save on time. And that's tight for now. So now 
now we've got the, the window head. Okay, so I've just reversed the just reversed that window. We've got the mirror image of that above, which I know is about right. Just for speed. And let's now draw that that roof condition above that. Okay, so here's our main section. Okay, and what we've got in this project is a quite a substantial timber that we're seeing right now. So a, a major, you know, major piece of timber there. And you can see that timber's all cut on the different angles. So that um, that, ri that um, eaves beam is resolving different geometries of the roof structure. So coming off that, are the main rafters, which you're seeing like that. Okay, on the on the pit. And there are intermediate members within that roof. Like that. Okay. And then the roof build up, the, the the kind of insulated roof buildup is kind of like a repeat of the wall, to be honest. So we've got we've got an OSB sheathing board above it. We've got an OSB board below it. Before, as in our um, sorry, as in our wall, the void is then filled with insulation. Now, because this is a roof, because roofs need higher standards of insulation. Looking at the thickness of this, I would have thought this would have to be a higher performance insulation than the wall. Just going to read to see what, what they say here. Yeah, it just says mineral wool. So it says here 240 millimeters of mineral wool in the roof, which is not actually loads considering this is Austria. I would have I would have thought there'd probably be more than that. But obviously okay. Insulation. And as before, we have a vapor barrier. Guess we've got a plastic sheet stapled to the underside of the OSB. Just to keep that moisture in the room, stop it getting into the into the into the roof buildup. And and then again they've got exactly the same idea that they've got this very nice veneered plywood finish. Now, the, the thing about using a product like veneered plywood, although it will cost, the benefit of it is you don't need to have wet trays. You don't need to plaster it. You don't need to paint it. Um, so, you know, often over a longer lifespan of the building, it might kind of pay for itself. But, you know, but also it, it, it looks really nice. There's the, there's the plywood. <coughs> and again, they've got a little... They've created a service zone in there, and there's a little detail. They've just finished this off with a just a piece of timber. Okay. So that's our. 
basic insulated roof for keeping the moisture in the building, oops, for keeping the heat in the building, but of course for not yet keeping the rain out. Okay, so if it rains on that, we all get very, very sweaty. Okay, so that's why we then, in this version, which is a cold roof, we're going to add the waterproof layer into it. And what they've done here, which I think is very successful, because they wanted this thin edge, what they've done is on top of all of this, they've laid, they've put timber, oops, timber joists, which are fixed down to that, to that roof. And what they've done is they've cantilevered those off. <coughs> they've, they've cantilevered that off to create this much thinner, thinner profile on the roof. So the main structure of the roof stops here. And all this little bit is doing is holding up a little bit of snow and a bit of wind. Okay, that's all that's for. So, you know, very clever technique there. That's your kind of real roof structure, but they didn't want, um, you know, they didn't want hugely thick eaves here, which can look pretty ugly, to be honest. So they want this kind of um, lighter touch where the roof gets thinner towards the edge. So that timber, timber member cantilevers over. It looks like it's about 100 millimeters, maybe even less. It's only a you know, fairly slim piece of timber, but because it's a long piece and it's fixed all the way back up the roof, it will be fairly strong. Then what they've done on the underside of that is they've just finished that off with some fir boarding. Oops. Okay. Which you could tongue and groove. I don't think they have, but you could tongue and groove it. So that's on the underside. Now, that will never get wet because it's completely under the roof. So there's no, <coughs> there's no concern about treating that or worried about, you know, we're not worried about water miraculously coming down and going back up <coughs> underneath. I mean, it might get blown occasionally, but, you know, it's fine, I'm sure. And <coughs> what they've gone for on this project is my favourite zinc Zinc gutters. Oops, let's clean out that. The product we commonly use in the UK is Lindav. They're not. Um, I mean, they're not. They're not from the UK, but it's a product that we often use for our flats. Okay, really good quality zinc gutters. They don't cost that much, and I've persuaded a few clients to use them because they were just. They're just going to last a lot longer than UPVC ones, which. You know, if the window cleaner leans his ladder against it and it breaks, you have a big snow load, it'll probably break. Zinc, you know, it's just going to last longer. At the end of the day, you can then recycle it. So it's a, you know, it, it sort of has a, a, a better lifespan. Right, those zinc gutters have a bracket which looks something like that. And that just gets fixed into the roof end of the timber. Sometimes they have a, an extension piece that you can, you can fix to the side of the bracket. Okay, and then this roof is a, um, it's actually a galvanized sheet steel roof. A, it's a standing seam roof. So you're going to, you're going to bring sheets of metal <coughs> to site. And what they will do is on the site, they'll have a machine that can dip together the metal and it can fold it and do all of that. It comes on the back of a lorry. Um, but they're going to bring it to site either in flat sheets or on a roll. Sometimes they bring it as a, as a roll of galvanized steel, stainless steel, zinc, copper. And then you're going to assemble it on site. 
the one thing that they, that they do need on site is they need something pretty solid to lay it to and also the, for the builders to work on. Um, and in this case, what they've done is they've just covered that entire roof with timber boarding. just um, you know planks of timber which in this case is silver fir <coughs> and cover that whole roof and it's very solid it will hold up all the all the snow loads that you get in Austria and it means that the contractors on site have got something good solid to work to. They're not going to fall through it. So it's great. Uh, and then the standing seam, <coughs> in this case steel roof, is a sim you know, simply sheet. The sheets will run up the roof and then they lap into the gutter like that. That's it. That doesn't really tell you the full story. So if I draw, <coughs> if I draw this section quickly, looking up the roof, I'll just do that really quickly over here. There's our timber planks on on top of the roof. And whoop, spanning, spanning the other way. Sorry. Maybe not. Okay, timber planks spanning across the roof now. Sat on our hundred mil deep joist. And the basic principle of the standing seam roof is that they, I'll draw it in close in stages here. They bring the sheets and they lay them out kind of like that, like trays on site. And then they have a machine that goes up the seam, zips it up, folds it over, and when they're finished, it will look something like Bit, it's much finer than that, okay? But basically, they take both ends, crimps it over, crimps it over again, crimps it under again. You end up with a completely watertight um, metal roof system. It's really high quality. It will last a hundred years, probably without any maintenance. So you know, it's really worth. If ever you can get a, a kind of standing seam roof, it will it will last a long, long time. Okay, so that's the kind of prin <coughs> principle there. And then the, I've not drawn it, but the rest of the roof build-up would be under here. And our ventilation zone is in here. So air is free to flow underneath that. Okay. On this project, I'm not going to draw it, but they've actually got, got a, ventil a ventilator at the eaves. Sorry, at the ridge as well. So at the apex of the roof... Up the top here, they have a ventilator just to help that air and that moisture to move on. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, can you stand back? Yeah. Okay. So an express <coughs> gutter. You know, there it is. There's your gutter. Um, the benefits of expressing it, cheaper, generally. <coughs> it's easier to clean it. Um, if, if that gutter was to get blocked up with leaves and overflow, it would just overflow over the edge. So, so there are many benefits to express gutters, easier to replace, but you know, not always the aesthetic that you, you're aiming for. 